Hi guys, and welcome to this first episode of a new series, so to speak, I'm going to be doing on Forza. I'm going to call it the, the Horizon Car Review, and to put it briefly, we're going to combine realism and facts with the sort of arcadery, if that's a word, of Forza. Obviously, since this is just Forza Horizon 4, it's not easy to make it completely 100% realistic, but we're going to combine realism uh, with a little bit of fun, so to speak. So that's just a brief introduction to what we'll be doing today. So I aim to make quite a few episodes out of this, reviewing different cars, pitting them up against other cars, talking about the facts. Um, obviously, some cars on Forza are not that closely matched with their real-life counterparts. I do appreciate that, and uh, it is rather difficult to uh, to make it 100% realistic, but we're going to go with what we can, and we're just going to delve into a, a new series, a new sort of world, I suppose, um, and see how it goes. This is the Mazda MX-5, and it has quite a lot of snow on it just now. I've been driving it around quite a bit. Um, basically, the MX-5 has been around for so long, and there have been many different renditions of it, many different designs, uh, and uh, many different models. It's the humble roadster car, of course. Everybody knows it as that. Um, it's proof that a car can be cheap and still have frills. For example, a base level MX-5 uh, costs round about 1.4 grand less than a base level Focus, um, which is extraordinary value for money. Of course, you don't get quite as much car with the MX-5 as you get with the Focus, but you do get a much more fun driving experience. So if practicality is something that matters to you, then the MX-5 probably is not your answer. However, we're going to jump into it. And we're going to take it for a little drive and see how it goes. Those of you who are watching who are quite familiar with Forza, you'll see that I've turned like the HUD, uh, or sorry, the map, the speed off, uh, the speedo off on the bottom right, bottom left. I just think that kind of enhances the realism aspect of the game. Uh, and I just, I think it allows for a better reviewing experience and uh, a better viewing experience as well for you guys. So the one thing that is very noticeable as soon as you start driving the Mazda is that that naturally aspirated engine really gives you the power to be able to go up to very, very high revs and the power never runs out. And this is what I absolutely love about naturally aspirated engines. Anyone who knows about Mazda well enough will know that Mazda do like to stick to naturally aspirated with their petrols. And I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, this car has 155 brake horsepower along with four, uh, sorry, 148 foot-pound of torque. And quite frankly, most people will see that as not enough. But you need to remember that this car weighs just a notch over a ton. And that really is just enough to have a little bit of fun on the roads. I mean, it absolutely clings into the corners as well as you'd want it to. So then, what about the design? When the original Miata, or MX-5, was released, the first one, the styling was simple yet elegant. There was not too many curves, not too many edges. It was just a good-looking car. Now, Mazda of... I wouldn't say improved the design, but they've definitely modernized it a lot with their latest one. I personally am not too sure about the rear end. I think it looks a little bit too bulky. Um, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to me like they really finished the design on it. Um, let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. The side profile, however, is where things start to improve. I'm a real fan of the way they've curved it, the way it sort of just goes from top and then swoops down along to the bottom here at the front end. I think it looks pretty stunning. Now the front end, this is a matter of opinion, it really is. I've seen people who don't like it, um, I've seen people who think it looks too angry, but personally I think it's really nice. I love the way the headlights sort of integrate into the front end, um, and I love that sort of mean, angry, chihuahua look that it has, so to speak. 
So this particular model, the 2 litre, does 0-60 in just over 6 seconds. And as you will see here, even with that natural aspiration, it is perfectly, perfectly punchy. Revs rather highly, 7,500 RPM. Really not too bad at all. It's got that typical sort of Japanese rumble that you get. Such a bag of fun to drive this car, honestly. Um, a lot of people love driving those fire-breathing monsters like Koenigsegg's and Ferraris on this. I sometimes like to just go out in the MX-5 and just enjoy a little bit of sort of carefree motoring. You know, it keeps you... It keeps you on your wits, this car, definitely, but it doesn't scare you. It's just an absolute joy to drive. Clips the apex the way you'd want it. Oh, hang on a minute. Why can I hear a turbo? So we have just jumped into a car that is pretty much identical on the insides to the MX-5. This is the new Fiat 124. And... Um, Instantly, you feel that punchiness of the turbo compared to the MX-5. And it's rather nice. But originally, I wasn't planning on driving this car. But I must say, I felt it was quite important to do so, as this car harks back to the old... Pardon him there. This car harks back to the old Fiat 124. Fiat was supposed to make this car a sort of hark back to the 60s one. Now... There are a few reasons I don't think Fiat have done this successfully. One being, this car was made in the same factory as the MX-5. It was built alongside it, basically. And that is why the interior is basically identical. However, it just doesn't feel like it should if it was trying to hark back to the old 124. Basing it off a car like the MX-5, or basing it off any other car really, other than itself, it's just the wrong way to go about it. So then, is there anything I do like about this car? I think the rear end is quite nice. I think it looks like a proper roadster. I especially like this radio antenna here. I think it's perfectly placed. The front end, however, I don't know what it is. There is just something that seems a little bit plain about it. It just doesn't strike me with excitement like the front end of the Mazda does. And that brings me on to the driving experience. Now, while this car may have a turbocharger, its 0-60 time is actually less than the Mazda's, as well as its top speeds. And you can really feel that. With the uh, turbocharger, it does take a while to sort of get going. And um, you can feel that on the roads. Now, cornering... I've driven this car a little bit before I started recording this, just to sort of get a feel for it. It feels a little too grippy in the corners. Now, maybe this is me overanalyzing it a little bit. It feels a little too grippy, and it doesn't really feel as fun or as lightweight as the Mazda does. I mean, you can throw it round a bend, and you can control it relatively well. But it just has that sort of heavyweight feeling to it. Now, obviously, like I said when I was introducing this, it could just be Forza physics. This car might not drive like this in real life. But I get that kind of feel from it in this game. So for me, this car really could have been quite a lot more. I mean, the old Fiat 124 was an absolute joy. It had that sort of perfect Italian blend of styling, drive quality, and pure excitement. Unfortunately, I don't think they've been able to replicate that with this new one. I wish they hadn't based it off of the MX-5, because I believe the MX-5 is a, should be a sort of unique product in its own right. And if Fiat had maybe spent a little bit more, you know, and um, got their own designers, own engineers to sort of go at work, I think this car could have been a whole lot better. Anyways, we're going to jump back into the MX-5 now makes an absolutely beautiful rumble, a sort of howl at high ends, this car. I especially appreciate the soul red colour, as they put it, that has been put on this. I think it shines no matter what the weather, although some may perceive it to be sort of maroon, but I don't believe so. I think it is an absolutely stunning, shiny looking red. You sometimes forget when driving this thing 
that it is naturally aspirated because it really does feel sometimes like it gives you that sort of boost that a turbo does. Without having the defects of a turbocharger, you feel like you've got all the power all the time. It never really bogs out. Now, obviously, I'm not comparing this to absolute monsters like Ferraris and that. But I will say, in its own right, this car is an absolutely stunning, fun car to drive. And I think for the price, it really is the best car out there in its class. So then, the Mazda MX-5. Quality design, quality to drive, quirky in its own right, has its minor issues, but I think it really is the best car in its class and I would recommend it to anyone who's thinking about buying a small, cheap, but cheerful roadster. And that really is all I have to say about that. Thank you all so much for watching this first episode of the Horizon Car Review. Uh, I am well open to um, constructive criticism in the comments. If there's anything you'd like change, any you know, structure of the video or what I'm reviewing or anything like that, do feel free to chip in any constructive opinions in the comments uh, and I'll be sure to review them um, and you know possibly implement them in the next one. So like I said, this, this really is just a sort of concept. Um, I've no idea how well this is going to go, if it will take off or not, but um, you know, especially during times like these in lockdown, it is really good to delve into new things and try new things out, and um, my passion for cars really does make me want to continue this. So um, yeah, thank you all very much for watching, and uh, see you in the next episode.